Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you know, Bas for organizing this fantastic uh, Global Innovation Day. I'm privileged to be here. I'm honored and I'm here to learn. But I am also aware that uh, you've been sitting there for a long time, so short of having another speech, can I just entertain you with a video that I found about innovation in Singapore? So if I could For get the technical GPS, assistance to say the morning, video, please. Thank you. And, Pacific. and now for our What in the World segment. America is the innovation capital of the world, the home to the best new research technologies, scientists, and companies. And the only way it'll stay vibrant as an economy and society is if it continues to lead the world in innovation. Unfortunately, it is increasingly evident that we're not as securely at the top as we once were. It's partly that we're not as focused as we should be on science and technology, but it's also that others are joining in the game, learning our tricks, and catching up. A study last year from the Boston Consulting Group and the National Association of Manufacturers found that the United States ranked eighth in the world in innovation. The top-ranked country is actually a city, a city-state one with a population of just over five million people. It's Singapore, and I stopped there this week to find out the secrets of their success. Hi there. Hi, welcome to my house. I hope you're enjoying your visit so far. That's a computer-generated avatar greeting me at a place called Fusion World. It's where Singapore's Agency for Science, Technology, and Research shows off its latest innovations. 2,400 scientists in a variety of fields, all working on research projects with massive government funding. Take a look at this TV of the future that you can control with hand gestures, no remote. Look at this smart billboard that can figure out your gender and can target advertisements accordingly. When a woman walks in front of it, she's shown a watch for women. But when I walk in front of it, the sensors read my face and throw up an ad for a man's watch. From modern madmen to medicine, this next one could save your life. A-star scientist Lee Kyun Moon helped me understand it. So here we have the hospital bed of the future. This is called a smart bed. Right. Why? Well, it has two layers of sensors. One layer detects the sleeping pattern, the pressure of the body, and the other layer detects breathing rate. If the patient's body stops moving or the patient stops breathing, an alarm goes off to alert doctors and nurses. But you don't have to be hooked up to anything? No, it's totally non-invasive. For this next one, the patient did have to be hooked up, and the patient was me. So what do we have here? This looks like a video game. This is our award-winning brain-computer interface technology. Well, it is all that, but it is also a video game. This is tough. I am controlling the blue car, guiding it around the track with my brain. The game is a way of uh, encouraging the patient to uh, concentrate more. The harder he concentrates, the faster the car will move. I had to train myself to concentrate really hard, but when I did, it worked. I was zooming around the track like Mario Andretti. Well, maybe like Super Mario. Now, what I was doing was just fun and games, but this invention has many very serious real-world applications, helping rehabilitate stroke victims, helping the severely paralyzed communicate with the outside world, and helping kids with attention deficit disorder. Rather than using drugs to deal with the symptoms of ADD, this game tries to get at the root cause and train children to focus and concentrate. So what is it that makes Singapore so good at innovation? Well, it needed to do something to move up the value chain. Around 2000, Singapore looked around and realized that it had to do something different to get ahead in the new world. Its wages were high, it couldn't compete with China in basic manufacturing anymore, so the government decided to pour money into innovation and R&D. Between 2000 and 2016, $30 billion of government money will have gone to innovation. Remember, Singapore has just over 5 million residents. So how much should the United States spend to stay ahead in this race? Well, I've argued much more than in the past. It's a new world with many new nations competing. My own number is about $700 billion, which is about what we spend on the Defense Department as a year. Well, so that's a little teaser on uh, Singapore, thanks to CNN. 
Um, but if we think that Singapore actually was a nation that embraced social innovation or innovation, technological innovation from day one, then we couldn't be more wrong than that. Singapore is a very young country. We got our independence only in 1965, and we had absolutely nothing underground. And with about just 670 square kilometers in total, it was not possible for us to also grow our land. And therefore, all that we had was just human beings, human capital standing above ground. So the strategy around that time where we were just suddenly made independence because of the pullout of the British colonial masters, uh, we had to then solve the problem of crisis because people were fighting people, there were civil riots, and then, of course, we have to ensure that there's jobs for people and maintain the peace and prosperity. All of those is, of course, history, and that was just very recently from 1965. In 1967 itself, we established what is called the Science Council, which really had a budget of just a few tens of thousand dollars. Um, and this is, of course, very little in the context of uh, those times even. But in 1991, where Singapore began to transit from the third world to first world, we established the very first national technological plan. And the idea was then to pump more money into science and research, and we kept it at about 1% of our gross domestic product. In 20, at the moment, at that time, you know, we had about um, 30 uh, researchers to 10,000 workers. In the year 2008, we had that number arise, arises to 88 researchers per 10,000 workers, and R&D took about 3% of our GDP. In 2011, which is this year itself, we have established another plan to pump in another $16.1 billion, which is approximately 3.5% of our GDP into R&D. But this time round, we had a little tweak. It's no longer just about science, research, innovation, but these innovation has to mean something to our own people. So what does it have to mean? Well, it means that they have to be put to good use to solve social concerns and social problems so that it is relevant to our people and, in fact, relevant to the world. So we established this thing called the National Innovation Challenge with about a billion dollars, where the challenge looks into areas of concern or big social concern that will fundamentally change the way we work, play and live. That includes issues on aging and related, and water, environment, and so on. But all of these are strategies that have pulled us through these years. And we are happy to say that, indeed, one, Singapore has experienced a great growth period from 1965 till today, with a few, I would say, very, very short recessions in between. The biggest recession that we found was really in the year uh, that everyone else experienced it, and that was, of course, 2008, 2009. And in that year itself, we decided that we have to do better than the rest of the nations around us because we were no longer competitive with high, wage rate, high wages. So what we needed to do was to get ahead of the curve. To do that, we started thinking through about where our highest value add is and started also to ask ourselves the question of when should we and could we come out of the recession. Two things very quickly. One is that we have came out of the recession. The growth last year was 14.5% with an unemployment rate of about 2% last year in 2010. This year itself, we are projected to grow to about 6.4% per annum and our unemployment rate uh, is currently at 1.9%, which means that literally there is little or no unemployment in Singapore. That's the first thing. We've came out well, because in part we are also situated in the uh, growing region of the world. But even more importantly, and I think this is where Maya mentioned, you know, never waste a crisis. And the question really is not when will the crisis blow over for the rest of the world, just like in Singapore in 2009. The real question is, how do we want to come out of the crisis as a person, 
do we want to come out as a positive or a negative-minded person? As a company, do we want to come out as a company that has helped the community in times of needs or one that has selfishly protected its assets? As a country, do we want to come out as a country, a nation that is fragmented or a nation that has indeed become more cohesive and socially bonded at the end of the crisis? All of these questions requires a paradigm shift in how we want to approach crisis and opportunities. And indeed, in Chinese, the word crisis is made up of two words, Wei Ji. Wei means crisis, danger. Ji means opportunity. So it's opportunity amidst danger. So indeed, the world is still very much in the period of opportunities amidst crisis. And I would like to therefore, in, the, in view of the fact that we have very little time, so I will leave a lot of uh, the unspoken till later if I get a chance, but I would like to leave a thought here before I go, and that is perhaps we have to ask ourselves, amidst this crisis itself, are many opportunities that has enabled us, as well as the young people, to connect with each other, to understand each other better, and also enable everyone to come together for collective action. And the question is, what is the ultimate bottom line that we have for ourselves, for our companies, and for our nation when the crisis blows over. This is something we ought to start thinking about because the crisis is bound to blow over, is bound to pass. We can come out of it via default and just doing the same old things or we can come out of it much stronger as a person, as a company, as a nation. The choice is ours to make. Thank you.